All right, thank you. Um, I put down here the link to a Facebook group that I'm running, Higher Ed Discussions of AI Writing. So anybody who is interested in joining that group, um, you are welcome to do that. It's a learning community and it's it's meant to be a place where we share ideas. OK, let's see. All right, so in spring of 2023, to prepare for what the AI might bring to our classrooms, I decided to revamp my three writing courses to use AI in purposeful and transparent ways, while also having critical discussions of AI output with my students. So I revamped my second semester English composition class, technical writing, and history of scientific rhetoric. The three courses are somewhat different in needs, allowing each class to try out the AI in ways that best suit each assignment, which has been a lot of fun. All right, so adding to that, um, I wanted to see if these changes were good, useful, valid, whatever other descriptor you want to add in there. I recruited another English composition colleague to work with me on an IRB study to test student perceptions of AI before and after learning about them in more detail. We are running pre and post reflections with each of our classes to see where students started the semester on their understanding of AI and where they will end their semester with an understanding of AI. We are both using AI in our assignments and teaching about it in different ways. In our face-to-face -face courses, we make sure to show ChatGPT and other AI program outputs to our students and discuss that output critically. Both of us have training in rhetoric, so we are using tools of rhetorical analysis to critique the output. We discuss the truthfulness of the output as well as the problems with it. We also look at how sure the AI sounds of its responses, such as when ChatGPT makes up sources and then it apologizes if you call it, out or when Bing chat tries to gaslight people into believing that it knows more than they do. We also look at the language choices the AI uses to discuss how interesting or not those choices are. Beyond that, we are using our own methods to engage with the AI in our classroom to see if there are some ways that might work better than others or some presentations that resonate better with students than others. The post reflections will hopefully give us a picture of what worked and what can be improved on for future courses. Now, granted, these students are unique in that AI just came on the scene for most of us in late November, and they are the first group to really be exposed to it, but we are hoping to gain some insight into best practices for the classroom as we move forward with using AI in purposeful ways. All right, so remember, critical thinking is required. We've learned that today very heavily. In each course, I explain that ChatGPT is a large language model, not a true artificial intelligence. It's basically a massive predictive text builder, learning what output should look like and then building output based on those rules. I bring in examples of the ChatGPT output and we look at what the bot can and can't do well. So it can answer basic questions, make lists, write and summarize text and write computer codes. ChatGPT cannot well, it's not sentient and I make sure that my students understand that it's not sentient and that it hallucinates when it doesn't know the information. I want to make sure they understand that they are not talking with another human. So it's not human. It's not always reliable because of those hallucinations. It is not unbiased and we've seen other comments about that so far today and supposedly it only gives us information up to 2021, but I keep seeing things online that make me question if that's actually true. So then here are my classroom guidelines. Um, I have a fair number of questions from other colleagues about my classroom policies and guidelines for AI usage. Some of these questions come from a place of fear that students will only use the AI to cheat, but other questions come from people who are interested in incorporating the AI into their own classrooms. So students are allowed to use the AI within set boundaries as long as they are transparent about that use. With each assignment, we discuss where and how the AI might be useful or helpful in the process. I'm also very clear about what is considered cheating at each step along the way. For example, brainstorming is okay, but having the bot write your draft is not. And so far, students have really embraced those boundaries and been honest about it. They'll um, give me screenshots or they'll say, hey, I use ChatGPT here, or um, as we'll see later on, <clears throat> we actually have classroom discussions about it as well. All right, so some of the written assignments that I have used so far. 
<clears throat> so we've been using brainstorming, and I've actually used this myself as well. Early drafting, I've used this one as well. Um, I had three drafts uh, or three documents that I had to write for something recently, and I had ChatGPT write them up. It was about, I think, seven pages of text altogether that I ended up with, and it took me about eight hours to go back through and edit the documents so that they did what I needed them to do. But it was a great starting place, and it got me going on something that I wasn't really comfortable with because it was a new area for me. You can also use it to research. So illicit.org was one of the ones that was mentioned earlier, and I've had some students have some luck with illicit. Uh, sometimes they find it better than the library database output, and other times it's kind of hit or miss. And the same thing with me. I ran a question about the fastest animal questioning if it was an eagle, a, a cheetah, or a unicorn, and it completely ignored the unicorn question and came back and just gave me information about different animals' land speeds, so it wasn't as helpful as uh, it might have been. And then feedback and critique of their own writing through ChatGPT. We are using that very heavily this semester. I do a lot of IRB projects. I do one almost every semester looking at transformative learning and then scholarship of teaching and learning. And so I'm really big into uh, feedback and reflection in my teaching. So let's talk about some of the student reflections. There have places for critical reflection and feedback in almost all of the assignments and they get a chance to look at the AI and discuss how useful it is for those tasks. In Comp 2, students get instructor feedback, peer feedback, and chat GPT feedback, and they complete reflections to discuss how well the bot critiques their writing as compared to their peers and instructor. On the first paper, which I just finished grading, <laughs> Um, looking at how chat or how AI is changing definitions of concepts, for example, how customer service has changed from the expectation to speak with a human to now understanding that chat bots are answering early questions in the troubleshooting process. Students were split about 50-50 for how useful chat GPT was in critiquing their papers. Students who received both peer evaluation and teacher comments seemed to find it less helpful in many cases than students who missed out on one of those other feedbacks. In tech writing, students completed a job project in groups and a handout about a topic. Then they were placed into different topics and had to ask ChatGPT for information on that new topic. They individually reflected on how good the ChatGPT output was compared to their classmates output on the handouts and then critiqued the information output itself and the rhetorical language and style that the bot used. Students were again split about 50-50 as to how useful they found the information. The more the topic has been written about, such as what to wear for a job interview, the better ChatGPT seemed to do. However, in some cases, it seemed that the presentation of information was harder to follow, which might indicate that having human intervention for the design portion of presenting is still important. And then history of scientific rhetoric. So these are my majors and they're all 4,000 and graduate level students. So last year of undergraduate and graduate level. Students are using the AI wherever they see fit with a few guidelines. We come into class and discuss what they have tried and what they found. These students, like I said, are all tech writing majors and I want them to learn about the AI tools so that they can show employers how they can work with AI instead of being replaced by those tools. So far, they have found AI helpful in brainstorming and narrowing down topics, early drafting, and again with illicit.org. I also learned that at least one of the students was not aware that OpenAI Playground and ChatGPT were different interfaces, which was a good reminder to me that as we work with these tools, we also need to make sure that students actually understand uh, the interfaces that they're using. And here's a classroom example from one of my students. They said, after weeks of considering and rejecting various research project topics, I turned to ChatGPT for help. I asked it about possible scientific topics that would be good for rhetorical analysis. I then asked for a list of authors in the field who had a long history of publishing on the topic. ChatGPT gave me a list of four climate scientists along with a short bio for each. Since I didn't really trust the AI not to have made up the scientists and their credentials, I did a search for articles and books by each through the library search engine. So this student kept spinning their wheels trying to figure out a topic. They were interested in client sci climate science, but they weren't sure how to narrow that topic down, and ChatGPT gave them a good start on that. 
And as you can see, because we'd already discussed how dangerous it can be to trust the AI output, the student talks about how they went back and did research to make sure that the person that they were going to be working on actually existed. <laughs> so at this point, we're at the halfway point of the semester, and I am still all in on AI to an extent. Um, we've reached that halfway point and I couldn't be more pleased with how my students are using the AI so far. They seem to be getting semi comfortable with it generally and they're quite comfortable talking with me or in class about what worked and didn't work. At this point, as far as I can tell, no one has turned in anything written wholly by AI. My hope is that by talking about the AI and showing its strengths and weaknesses, my students will learn to see these programs just as another tool. I continue to be part of groups on campus seeking to inform instructors about the potential helpful uses of different AI programs. And next week, some of my students from Scientific Rhetoric will be giving a presentation about how they have used different AI programs so far this semester. Their final project this semester will allow them to integrate some of the AI output into their own writing with a guideline of maximum 50% AI in their rough draft and 15% max AI in their final draft. And they're going to color code that AI so I know what is AI output. So that will be red and the rest of their writing will be black. And then if needed, I can always use the compare function in Word to double check. All right, so at the end of the day, I see my place in the classroom as one of AI cheerleader with a fair dose of critical reflection involved. Students will use the AI whether or not we discuss it with them. I see it as important to teach them how to use these programs well so that their future work with will be within ethical guidelines placed on them by their institutions. So excited, hopeful, and I'm still critical using those reflection pieces. So any questions? Fantastic. Thank you so much. Another great talk and um, you know, what a great way to uh, what a great slide to end on as well, because I think that pretty much sums it up perfectly. I think it's um, that's that's brilliant. Um, I have a question, if that's OK. Um, you, you gave some really interesting feedback from students, which was really nice to see how they were using it to to get those sources, but then realizing that they kind of then had to basically check to make sure those are real because I've been playing around with that as well, and it does come up with some curveballs there. Um, but I was just wondering, like, what strategies did you use to engage with students who may have felt overwhelmed by, like, using this these new AI tools? Um, because I, while some students will kind of undoubtedly be kind of way ahead of the game, there there, there are going to be lots that aren't. Um, and they're going to feel kind of anxious and concerned and on all, all those things. So I was just wondering if, if you had any conversations with students about that. Lots and lots. Uh, I came in the first <laughs> day and because I introduced the IRB to all of my students, I said, hey, this is what ChatGPT looks like. This is an AI. This is the website that you go to use it. Here is an example of some output. So we use that one about the cheetah, the um, eagle and the unicorn just kind of as fun to see what it came up with. Um, and we continue to talk about it. We every time something new comes up, I bring it into class and we talk about it and I'm very transparent with them about it. Um, they have so far done really well with not freaking out um, and not feeling or not acting overwhelmed. Um, and I honestly think that next fall it's going to be a whole new set of students because at least in the US a lot of um, K through 12, so elementary school and secondary um, elementary have banned it. And so we're going to have students who come in only knowing how to use it to cheat. And those are only the students who have devices that are not connected to their schools, because if you only have a computer from your school, then you might not be able to get onto these. So I think we're also going to see a socioeconomic divide um, that, again, I think as long as we come into classes and we're talking about it and we're integrating use into how we teach about it, then it just becomes another tool. Absolutely. And they, that's really interesting actually I think that's key isn't it as, as we've said kind of a number of times just those open and honest discussions with students um I, I just think it's, it's so important it really is um but yeah unfortunately we've run to time Laura um it's been another great talk and thank you again so much for, for taking the time to, to do this it's, it's been it's been brilliant thank you Certainly.